Welcome to Ride Line, the greatest podcast in sports betting entertainment. My name is Tanner Kern, certified G, bona fide stud, and you can't teach that. In this right here, this is G Money Grant Mitchell. We are delivering you the NBA and the college basketball picks for Monday, February, March 4th, that you need to know, and you can't teach that. Bada boom, man of the people in the room. How you doing, Grant? Doing great, Tanner. Great intro. Great intro, as always. On the road, flying through adverse circumstances, as always. I feel like the Ride the Line viewing audience has seen you all over the country at this point. I try to be. I try to be all over the country for the people. I did say February instead of March there for a second, but I was in the car. We drove down, and I was in the car for over 20 hours the past two days. So I've just been grinding. I'm, I'm locked in, though. I'm ready to give it all for the people. And I appreciate the people giving it all to us. The views are going through the roof, guys. So make sure you keep subscribing to the channel, liking the videos, commenting, do it at all. And we're going to be here through March Madness. And as long as you guys keep us here, give them the picks. Yeah, and of course, it's, it's a two-way street. It's a two-way street here. You know, Tanner and I have been giving out the winners, and we've been cooking as of late. So we appreciate you guys, you know, joining us for this journey. Yeah, definitely. And we're going to keep it up, guys. March Madness is almost here. I got a couple college basketball picks today. Grant's got a few in the NBA. But before we talk about any picks, we got to talk about the Boston Celtics, who will win the NBA Finals this year because it's the C's. It's Jason Tatum. It's Jalen Brown, who can't dribble with his left hand. And it's one hell of a team. They were dominant the past few days. Yeah, the first team in NBA history with three wins of at least 50 points. In my mind, I, I've told you off camera, Tanner, I'm still not picking them to win the title because I have questions about their decision making in the final two minutes. But that's not to say that they should not win this title. The Boston is the best team in the league. Like They are dominant at pretty much everything. They're the most, most versatile team. You know, they can play defense. They can play offense. They can rebound. They can go in transition. They can run the half court. They have the best bench rating. They can win at home and on the road. They can literally do everything. So the fact they're only, what was it, plus 210 to win the NBA Finals right now, I thought it would be lower. I, th I thought it would be closer to plus 150 or below that. They're still plus money to win the East. They should. There's no way. They should be like minus 200 to win the East. They are so clearly better than everybody. It's no excuses for Boston this year. Well, it's continued to drop. I think before this like winning streak heater that they've been on beating teams by as much as they were, I think they were like plus 220, plus 230. Now it's down to plus 205. I, I personally don't think – Again, I, I think they should be a little lower, but I don't think you can list them for like plus 100 right now in the in the final. Because they have to, you have to win so many games in the NBA playoffs to get to where you need to go. And anything can happen. Usually the better team wins over seven game series, obviously, but there's still a lot of work that has to be done. Even for plus 200, that's a risk taking it at that low. It is. Don't get me wrong, but I still think at that price, the odds makers are going to rack up a lot of uh, liability. So I'm surprised that they didn't lower it. Try to get some bets going for the other teams. Definitely. Well, in the East, at least, I mean, it's the Bucks. I don't think the Bucks can hang with them at all. I mean, you know who you got to be worried about, right? Giannis. No, Miami. <laughs> you got to be worried about Miami. Doesn't matter if they're the two seed. Doesn't matter if they're the the nine seed. They got to come through the play in. They are. They are your bogey team, and they're playing really good basketball as of late. They're like the Joe Burrow to Patrick Mahomes. <laughs> they're Patrick Mahomes. Joe I mean, Burrow. no, because Patrick Mahomes beat Joe Burrow and then won a Super Bowl. So, well, with that being said, though, that 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 rivalry's played out a little more, right, than the Tatum Heat rivalry. I I mean, yeah, but Burrow and and or Mahomes has beaten Burrow and won a title. The Celtics have never won a title, so I don't think it's a fair comparison. Well, yeah, but we're not there yet either. Like this, is, we've we're not there. We're not there. We haven't but, had but it. why not? You've been in the final four for like the last six, seven seasons straight. Because now Tatum's finally coming into his own. Tatum's in his prime year. Is Tatum Tatum is younger than Joe Burrow? Uh Tatum's 25. How old's Burrow? Like 27. Yeah, I think I think 27. Yeah, Tatum's younger than him. I mean, but they start playing younger in the NBA than the NFL. It's no, a good comparison. Joe Burrow. <laughs> Is it's 20... not the worst comparison, but it's also it, it's a little disrespectful uh, considering it, the Celtics haven't won the finals yet. It's a kryptonite. That's their kryptonite. That's what I'm trying to say. Joe Burrow's 27. Mahomes is 28. If there's one quarterback in the NFL that can beat Patrick Mahomes, who would you say it is? I, I would say Burrow, yeah. Joe Burrow. So if there's one team that could beat the Celtics when you probably don't expect it this year, who is it? No, yeah, I, I get, I do get what you're saying. Don't get me wrong. Although I do think if the Knicks get healthy, um, they would also be a bad matchup because they are, the Knicks are very similar to Miami and kind of how they approach the game. So I would watch out for them too. 
What happened to Jalen Brunson? Did he tear something? No, he w- jumped up. He, he was going up for a jumper, and I believe on the way up, he banged knees with somebody. Um, and so when he landed, it looked like he had landed. People were worried that he took off awkwardly. It was actually more of the landing that looked pretty awkward, and that can be bad. But um, so his x-rays apparently were fine, um, and it was the contact. It, you, it was tough to see on television, but when they slowed it down, it was definitely a contact injury. And as you know, contact injury is better than non-contact. It looked like he blew his knee out. So it did, for sure. Bumped, bumped knees with somebody. Come on. It, it for sure looked like he, he was done. Because when he jumped, like when you run in fast and full speed, it, when he jumps, it looks like it doesn't look like it happened on the landing. It looks like he was in pain in the air, which he obviously was if he bumped knees. Um, yeah, he, he'll be he'll be fine. The reason I say the landing is because like he landed and then you could really see it kind of get to him. That's when he started like limping and then he went over and fell down. But yeah, he, he I mean, you know, we're still waiting to hear officially, but it looks like he escaped out of that one. Yeah, contact's fine. Anyways, Grant, NBA, you got two picks tonight. Give me your first one. Yeah, so um, I, this is the one, the game that I'm doing the write-up for over on WSN.com. If you guys want to check them out Monday through Friday, do about a 1,000 words on these, hitting at 62% against the spread this season. So we've been doing pretty well. Today's pick is going to be the Milwaukee Bucks, minus 5.5. Um, now, I always get my odds from the same place when I do do these write-ups. However, doing some general line shopping, looks like you can get them as low as minus 5. Um, but yeah, I like the Bucks minus five against the Los Angeles Clippers here. This is a very interesting matchup to me t- for me, Tanner, because looking at some just trends here, the Bucks have been pretty terrible in all regards when it comes to the spread and stuff like that. The Clippers do have a winning record against the spread, but they're only 40% against the spread as a road underdog. And they, um, they are 5-10 and 10 against the spread with a rest disadvantage. Milwaukee, weirdly, 3-10 and 10 against the spread with a rest advantage, which I just find very strange. Um, but so both those, though, both those not very good. Um, the Bucs are playing the best basketball of the season. There's no doubt about it. Won five straight games. Doc Rivers has the team up to fifth in defensive efficiency over their last 15. Uh, with that said, I think you can poke holes in pretty much all of those wins. Two of them were against the Hornets, who were terrible. One was against the Sixers without Embiid. They did beat the Minnesota Timberwolves on the road, which was awesome. Maybe their best win of the season, but it was the first game after the All-Star break, so you had a week to game plan and rest up and all that stuff. So I think, you know, even though Milwaukee is playing better, I still think there are plenty of questions they still have to answer. Um, That being said, they're taking on a Clippers team that, has been one of the best teams in basketball. Um, If you go to about a week after the James Harden trade, they still have the second best record in the league since that time. I believe it's uh, November 17th. It's Boston at 39 and 10, and then the Clippers at 36 and 13. They've also been one of the best road teams in basketball, got the fifth best net rating when they are on the road. That being said, last three, four weeks have not been great. Uh, Their record is still fine, but They're 15th in net rating. They have an even point differential, 22nd in defense, 24th in rebounding. So it's it's a matchup between a team that's been highly consistent but is starting to struggle a little bit with less rest. And then the other team, which has this crazy high ceiling but also a very low floor, they look like they're turning it on, but we don't know if it's going to last. So I just find it very uh, difficult and very interesting to try to analyze this. But overall, I'm going to go with Milwaukee. Um, I think you got to ride the hot hand while you can. They are at home. That's important because they play much better on their home court. And not only do they have a rest advantage, they have two days that they haven't played since Saturday, uh, or excuse me, since Friday. And then the Clippers were playing last night and they play the Timberwolves defensive battle, low scoring game um, goes right down to the wire. You got to get on the plane, fly to Milwaukee. I, I think I'm going to go with the Bucks here. Wouldn't be surprised if this one is super close, goes down to the wire, but I do like Milwaukee to cover the five and a half. I like it too. I might look at Milwaukee first half potentially just because LA is tired coming into this one and you have a Bucks team that plays really well at home. So they come out to a good start. My one hesitation here is that I did bet the Celtics against the Clippers one of the nights they had a back to back, like when that, when the Clippers were in that crazy run, like in the beginning of it more so, I believe. I went to that game and the Celtics got blown off the court. That was like their first loss at home, I believe. So, uh, would have been the second one. The first second one was the Denver. Home. Yeah, second loss. So it was like that was consecutive like games for them. It was like Denver right into the Clippers are pretty close. Yep. Um, so yeah, that that's my one hesitation. But I like it, Grant. I like the I like the thinking behind it. Thank you. And do you agree with me though? Like it is it is tough because there's so much going on. It could go either way, really. 
Yeah, it could. I mean, the Clippers are 18 and 12 on the road. That's a good road record in the NBA. The Bucs are good at home. The Clippers have played well. The, the Bucs look like they're heating up and they're beating teams by a lot right now. So it, it could go either way. But I, I would lean towards the home team here. With all things even, I'm taking the home team. Okay, cool. Let's see what your first pick is. All right. So ladder challenge day four. We're officially on to day four. We're so back we're, on. We're feeling good. Day four is day four is pretty good. We're going through both ESPN games today. So I'm going to break down both ESPN games here. These are my ladder pick challenge official parlay so we're going duke and then we're going baylor i'll save the baylor breakdown for after grant gives his second nba pick but i do like duke on the road tonight minus five and a half against nc state feeling pretty good here duke has been rolling everyone in their path they did lose to wake forest uh, on february 24th on the road but other than that they've looked really good they've covered it for their past five games and they have a massive advantage in the ken palm rankings over um, NC State. NC State comes into this one in the 70s, high 70s, I believe, in the Ken Palm, 76. And then you have a Duke team that is coming in at seventh overall. You also have Kyle Filipowski, who literally, it looked like the court storming situation when that happened. It looked like he died, and then he came back. He's doing like windmill dunks now. He didn't miss a game. They're, they're saying he made the best comeback since DeMar Hamlin. Yeah, he did. Like It looked like he died. And also, too, he like tried to trip the student. Like he stuck his foot out. Did you see the high angle? Can, so can, can I can I jump in on this? Yes. If you invade my personal space in any walk of life, I'm going to f- try to get you out of it. You know, whether that is me like n- nudging you or me stepping out of the way. If you're a drunk college student rushing the court, getting in my face and screaming and holding your phone up and like. He didn't do that though. I, I know he did it. It was more of a general court storming thing. Yeah, like, a court storming situation. I don't mind a player like shoving them out of the way or giving a little shoulder check. Like it, it's it's like it's one of those play stupid games, win stupid prizes things. I think I personally think the kid didn't like if you look at the high angle, like Filipowski definitely stuck his leg out. So he deserved to get a little injured there. If that's what if you're gonna do that, like he he openly went out of his way to stick his leg out at the kid. Yeah, he so, did. He did. With that being said, though, yeah, I'm. I don't mind. Like, if a student runs into, if like the Caleb Williams situation back when we had that this year, like when the kid was like putting his face up, like Caleb yeah. Williams handled that like a champ because I would, you would want to knock the kid out, but he 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 handled that well. However, in this situation, like Filipowski stuck his leg out at the kid, so he deserved to get roughed up a little bit. He, he did, yeah, he did. Um, also, too, if you don't want to have a court storm, don't lose on the road. <laughs> you're ranked like, don't just don't lose on the road it's that like the the duke coach like complaining like he's like all these guys are getting hurt and blah blah don't lose on the road yeah i love that i love how that's kind of the go-to in sports like you don't want somebody celebrating in front of you well then don't lose <laughs> i guarantee there would have not been a court storm if you didn't lose to them okay <laughs> like that's the thing so kyle Filipowski. Um, doing 17 points per game, coming off a, over a 20 point performance against Virginia on Saturday. Who's terrible? Virginia is a, a horrendous basketball team offensively. They cannot score. Um, so Duke beat them 73 to 48. NC State has lost uh, three of their past four games. They do have some playmakers to worry about. One of those is DJ Horn. He's been fantastic for them, scoring 17 points per game. But I got to trust how well Duke has played. This is going to be a hostile environment. The Barstool Storm Chasers are there. Um, NC State is looking for a big win, but Duke can also get first place in the ACC with the win here, or tie for it, and then they're going to play North Carolina, and that could ultimately decide the ACC championship game, or the, the regular season ACC title next Saturday. So still playing for a lot here. And for the latter, you're taking the money line here, am I correct? Duke money line. I hate taking ranked teams on the road against unranked. I'll do it in certain situations. There's enough advantage in the Ken Palm rankings for me to do it here. Gotcha. Yeah. I mean, NC State, they lost by nine to UNC. Believe the spread was 11. So they didn't, they did end up covering, but that's only because they shot 47% from three. Um, They had somebody go five of seven from three off the bench. Without that, that game's probably not particularly close. Um, I mean, 22, 22 points from a single bench player in college is is certainly it's, it's something that you don't expect to get a whole lot um well above the season average the player was Jaden taylor by the way so yeah i mean nc state you know they have some selling points you know they're not necessarily a bad team but duke is a whole lot better and for only five and a half i think you do have to lay the points there yeah and duke's also playing for a two seed in the ncaa tournament they they can't lose this game like this is just not a game they can lose tonight so obviously they can't lose it but this is a game that they need to win if they want to be a two seed and have a chance at the acc regular season title yeah, I agree with you. 
All right, Grant, next NBA pick. Um, okay, so to be honest, I don't love a lot of the board for the NBA here. The, the It's funny, um, the picks that I do, the write-ups that I do for WSN, you know, I don't want to say they're, they're kind of random because they're normally priority games, but we, we don't stick to, you know, this is the, the national game or this is this, this is the first place team. Like, it's just kind of what's one of the better matchups of the day. And a lot of the time, you don't want to bet on the better matchups because they're pretty even. But that game ended up, I was able to get a good lean on that one. Really, the only other game that I could find any sort of lean on was the Los Angeles Lakers on the money line against the Oklahoma City Thunder here. And like I said, still not as strong as I feel about that Bucks pick, but I do like this one. And it's interesting because OKC with their win last night went to first place in the Western Conference, which is just remarkable for the second youngest team in the league. Um, and, and that game, though, that game, they were up by 24 points in the third quarter, and then they were down six in the fourth quarter against the Phoenix Suns without Devin Booker. Now, they still ended up winning by eight, which I guess is a testament to, to their I don't want to say championship medal because they're second youngest team and we still haven't really seen them in the playoffs, but it was a testament to how good of a team they are. But with that being said, they blew that lead. Like, like I couldn't believe what I was seeing because they were so dominant. And then Phoenix just randomly was able to get back in that game. And they also ha allowed Yusuf Nurkic to grab 31 rebounds. I've been saying this pretty much all year. OKC might be the best team in the West in the regular season, but they could easily lose in the first round of the playoffs because they can't rebound. And I know when you think of basketball, you think, well, offensive defense. Rebounding is so important in the playoffs because you have to end those possessions. And when you're going against the Los Angeles Lakers team, who, by the way, is not rebounding the ball well as a team, but you know what they have? They have Anthony Davis and they have LeBron James. LeBron can easily get you 10 to 12 boards and Anthony Davis can get you 18 to 20. If you look at the three previous matchups between these teams, the Thunder did win the first one that was early in the year and they dog walked the Lakers. They beat them by 23, but then the Lakers bounced back. They beat them two days before Christmas and they beat them in January. So the Lakers, despite being the 10 seed in the West right now, are actually two and three against OKC. And it just goes to one of those styles make fight sort of situations I think the Lakers match up with them better. Um, the improved offense and shooting, you know, D'Angelo Russell, Austin Reeves, the, Rui Hachimura, those guys stepping up, that's going to help them keep pace. Um, they've got the rebound advantage, like I said. They, they can play good defense, and they're more rested than OKC is. OKC is on the second night of a back-to-back. -back. So even though it's weird to take the 10 seed on the money line against the one seed, I think you go with the Lakers in this one. I mean, the line should tell you something here, too. So it opened as the Thunder as a one and a half point favorite is now shifted to the Lakers being a one and a half point favorite. So the, the shift there, people are back in L.A. in the spot. I don't think it's unwarranted, like you said, the rebounding situation, but also OKC being on the back to back. And again, if the Thunder are truly the best team in the West and they're a dog on the road against the Lakers, even on the back to back, that should still that should still tell you something. Yeah, and to everybody out there who is interested in betting this game, LeBron, AD, both questionable. So maybe hold off, make sure they're playing. Um, but I believe they will. I believe that they will. Lakers 21 and 10 at home, too. So feeling good. Yeah, there. they're a very good home team. It's, it's it's funny because they're actually quietly very good at home. It's just the road has, has been an issue for them all year. Definitely. All right, Grant. Final pick. You ready for this? Yeah, let's hit it. Let's hear it. The Baylor Bears. This is part two of the ladder challenge. We're going both the SPN games tonight. We're going through the, we are going, we're, we're going right into the storm. Literally both ESPN primetime games here. Um, Baylor on the, I'm taking them on, on the money line for the, the ladder challenge, but I like the minus six and a half here against Texas. Texas actually beat Baylor in Austin before by two points. Now Texas is coming to Baylor. We have a big game here. 15th ranked Bears going against unranked Texas. This is senior night for Baylor. All signs are pointing to Baylor winning this game, and I think they have the team to do it um, by six and a half points here. It's going to come down to free throws at the end. It's going to take a late run in the second half. This game will probably be very close at the half, so if you're considering a halftime bet, I would stay away from that totally. I think Baylor's going to wear them down throughout this game. Offensively, they're scoring six points more per game than Texas. Defensively, they're both in the same ballpark. Baylor's slightly more efficient from the field. When you look at the Ken Palm rankings, Baylor is coming in at 14. Texas is 26, so again, a very, very tight matchup the thing about Baylor is they are fifth in the country in offense when they go on runs tonight at home I think the crowd and the defensive momentum like the crowd will the defense will take care of itself at home tonight I think they're going to be able to score um, and find a way to take Texas down here 
Look for um, Jacoby Walter. He's been the guy freshman scoring 14 points per game for Baylor. Uh, he had 11 against Kansas last game. That was a big game for for Baylor, too. That was one that they went on a run on on Saturday late in the second half against a Kansas team that already beaten them early in the season. So I think we're going to see a similar result here on senior night. Yeah, both these teams have been playing some really tough competition lately, so they're both going to be battle-tested, both coming in on back-to-back -back wins. However, Texas only 5-5 five and five across their last 10, and common opponents is, is a terrible way to look at games, but um, Texas did get blown out by Houston. Baylor's able to keep it pretty close. Um, Texas lost to Kansas. Baylor beat them by eight in their last game. You know, this is a time where you can take the hot team. They're also at home, which definitely helps out. Max Aismas, Texas guard, really been struggling shooting the ball as of late. Um, he did finally break out of it a little bit, 15 points on 50% last game. But before that, like five, six straight games with a very low field goal percentage. So you can slow him down. And he is undersized. You know, that doesn't matter in college necessarily as much as it does in the professional leagues. But if you can put a body on him, slow him down just a little bit, that'll go a long way towards Baylor getting the win here. Senior night. How do you, how do you want to be remembered? One game for the rest of your life. How do you want to be remembered? Champion? You want to lose the ladder or you want to win the ladder? So – how does senior night work for guys who intend to come back for fifth and sixth years? Like, do they just get multiple senior nights? Yeah, they get multiple senior nights. Like, I, I don't know how that works exactly. A lot of these guys, there's not a lot of seniors in college basketball anymore. There's very few seniors. You don't see a lot because they're always going. Like yesterday, it was senior day for UConn, and it was Andrew Hurley was the senior. So Dan Hurley said, like, no, there were no, yeah. there were no legit seniors on the basketball yeah. team. <laughs> and, you know, know. Well, go ahead, go ahead. So like if yeah okay so if like Klingon Tristan New like UConn could literally win a national championship for the next whatever three years and then they had whatever the other kid to kill a can but um but like if you look at like the UConn's program or something like all these really good teams like a lot of the playmakers are just sophomores and juniors and then they go to the NBA yeah. It's funny, too, because I don't feel like we see at the same time, while I agree with you, I don't think we see a ton of one and dones. any like it used to be kind of like you had to be a one and done to go to the NBA. Now you're seeing teams are starting to value that experience a little bit more. All right. So Baylor has let's see here. Baylor has three seniors. Ray J. Dennis scoring 13 points per game. So that's that's noteworthy. He's doing like 33 minutes. So he's a he's a contributor. He's he, he cares. I'll tell you what. <laughs> Then they have Jonathan Taquama Tachacha. He's doing 1.4 points per game, so he's he's a scrub. And then Austin Sachs is doing 1.1 points per game. So this is this is two practice players, and oh, then they have Caleb Caleb Loner who is doing 2.1 points per game. It's, so it's they, one guy on the rotation, basically. One guy, but it's going to be emotional for the other three. The other guy, the other three, have put blood, sweat, and tears into the Baylor Bears basketball program, and they're not going out a loser. How did they? The young guys got to go win it for the seniors tonight. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. And if you're if you are a senior night, I do. There's, I don't know how it works. Do all coaches try to get their seniors in on senior night, no. or is it like it's got to be a blowout? No, not for this. Like, yeah, like, I was thinking there's no way like they start the game or anything like that. Like, let's see. Let's. It, this is this is the true test. How much Andrew Hurley played for two minutes against Seton Hall, and UConn won by thirty. <laughs> that's <laughs> and that's his son too. <laughs> that's the coach's son. He played for two minutes <laughs> and they won by thirty. He made one free throw. UConn, okay, so at the halfway, UConn, with with eight minutes, with 10 minutes left in the second, UConn was up 23 points. So Andrew Hurley played for, the coach's son played for two minutes. They don't care. These seniors are not playing for Baylor. Anything. Yeah, well, you know what, Tanner? I hope Baylor gets a win for you. I hope they do too, because that's the second leg of the ladder challenge. And Duke's not, like, Duke's the one I feel a little better about, even though they're on the road. No, I agree with you. I think it is Baylor that can mess it up because th that conference can beat up on itself so easily. Yeah, definitely can. All right, Grant. Well, let's take it out of here. Guys, that's going to do it for this episode of Ride the Line. Tanner and I hope you guys have a great Monday. Before you get on out of here, make sure that you have subscribed to the channel. Drop some comments. Let us know who you're betting on. Like the video if you enjoyed. And we will catch you all in the next episode of Ride the Line.